Revenge. Hello everybody, today we're going over Revenge. Just ordered this movie off of Amazon, didn't know anything about it other than it has something to do with revenge. If you don't know me, I love revenge movies. That's my favorite guilty pleasure genre of all time. Just a simple story of getting revenge. I love it. But this movie, eh. This movie was better than Mandy, I can tell you that. I mean, the mo Mandy wasn't even about revenge. It was about nothing. This movie's actually about revenge, but it takes more of a stylistic route, you know? This movie came out in 2017 and it tells a story about a woman who's fucking this rich guy in Mexico, I presume. But the guy speaks like Russian and then he speaks the native language of whatever the country they're in. They never establish where they are, but this American girl, I assume she's American, they don't establish that either. But this American girl, she wears a shirt that says, I love LA, and she wants to go to Los Angeles. I assume she's fucking this rich guy for a ticket there, and he ends up only like providing her a ticket to Canada. But she's there fucking him, and he has these two friends that come over and they're hunting buddies, and then one day, one of the honey buddies is left alone with the girl and the hunting buddy fucks her forcibly. It's rape. The one guy comes home and the way he deals with the situation is by pushing the bitch off a cliff. That's how you deal with your problems. She falls and dies or at least they think that she died and they say alright we'll clean up the body later and then when they get there later she's gone and she's gonna hunt them down one by one. Now before we get into the things that are wrong with this fucking movie let me just go over the things I did like about this movie. This movie is very well shot. Like this is a first time director, uh, a female director. I don't know too many female directors, you know, it's just like Rachel Talley, Freddy's Dead, it's not a good example but that's one I know. The remake to Carrie was done by a woman and that's all I know when it comes to female directors. Oh yeah, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery is another one. Uh, La uh, Lambert, whatever. Who cares? But this movie's very well shot. The cinematography is amazing. This one house that this guy lives in, I would love to live there. It's very beautiful. Even shots of like apples on a counter with like an ant crawling on it. Just very art, just very stylistic, artistic. Just things like that you look at it like, oh wow, that's strangely beautiful. This movie has a slow burn to it sometimes in some parts. It's, it's like, yeah, you can, Cut, trim this movie could be trimmed down some it's like an hour and 48 minutes it could have been an hour and a half easily but it's all right we get some great gore in this movie not like you know intestines or anything but this guy those guys who get like their stomach shot and like skin just falls off and just in innards you can see it guy's foot gets sliced open blood's just gushing lots of blood gushing out of wounds in this movie the acting is pretty decent it's serviceable i mean i don't know if they're good i mean when it's it's foreign this movie's foreign the girl, the main girl speaks English, but these other guys, they speak English some, but for the most part, throughout 80% of the movie, they're speaking a foreign language that I don't know what it is. At some moments, I'm like, oh, that sounds Russian. And then it's like, nah, I don't know what the fuck you guys are saying anymore. Is it Spanish? I doubt it, because I know some Spanish, and it didn't sound Spanish. I enjoy the revenge aspect of it. It could have been done a little bit better, but I, I mean, I enjoy it. It's, it's like a guilty pleasure movie. So it's not that terrible. The tone's consistent. It's very serious. It's not like comedy in this movie at all. So the tone's not like deaf or anything. I felt that the realism of this movie could have been done better. There's moments that are realistic. Like she's not a crack shot, like just like poof, headshot. She actually like, when she takes her first shot, she misses, she hits the shoulder. It throws her back because she's never shot a gun before. There's some moments where it's like, that's accurate. And then there's lots of other things where you just have to like suspend belief. I like that when she does get her wound and I'll talk about it in my negatives, but she does tend, she ends up getting like a hole in her, you know, on her front and back. And she does like heal it smartly, Rambo style, like in First Blood. She actually like puts heat on both sides of the body. So I like that she did that, but she would have been dead way before she got to that point. This movie does build some good tension in some moments, and there's moments where I was like building tension for myself. Like I thought something was going to happen, but it didn't. Which is always good, because I don't always want to predict what's going to happen in a scene, and then it happens. I'm like, yep, there it is. Knew it. I guess another positive is that the rape isn't like so freaking like evil like Glass House on the Left. I don't want to be uncomfortable when I'm watching this movie. The rape is done like off screen, so I like that. The implications there, and that's all you really need. We don't need to go so dark, all right? This isn't Last House on the Left. This is just, this is a more tame version of that. But yeah, I can't really think of anything else. I mean, for the most part, this movie is, it's good. It's not bad, but it's also not great. So, I mean, but let's just talk about those bad things. All right, negatives. Uh, this woman, she is just not likable to me. I don't even know what the hell she's doing there. Is she a student? Where are they located? I have no idea. I know that one guy speaks Russian. He says, yeah, спасибо, papa, which means thank you, dad. So I thought, but maybe I misheard it. it Sound like he was speaking Russian and then he's speaking some other foreign language throughout the entire film. This is a subtitle film and that could be a negative for some if you have to keep reading what's happening. 
over and over and over and over again. So that can be a negative. But this main woman, I don't know what she's doing there. She wants to get to LA and she needs this guy for some reason. And she's fucking him. She knows he's married. So right away, she's a piece of shit. She's fucking a guy that she knows is married just to get a ticket to LA. She's grinding up against these guys. She's acting very slutty. She's blowing this dude and then grinding up against these guys in front of the guy she fucked and is in love with. And the rape just felt so forced just for just to serve a purpose to the story to like drive the story forward and to get to the revenge. It's like, did this guy really think that his friend would be okay with him raping the girl that he's sleeping with? Just like, oh, my friend's gone. He'll be back in an hour or two. I'm going to rape you. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Shh. It's like, of course he's going to find out. What the fuck were you thinking? Like, seriously, it's just, it's stupid. Like, the rape was just forced. It didn't even feel like it happened genuinely. It's just like, all right, we need an excuse for him to rape him, her. So let's just have him rape her for no reason. His reason was, you were grinding on me last night. It was because she was probably drunk. And yeah, she just, she's very slutty. So she's not even like a likable character. I'm not saying she deserved to be raped. I'm just saying that she's not a likable person at the beginning. You could say that was a ballsy direction, but for me, I'm just like, I want to root for this person, and it's kind of hard to, but then when she gets raped, you're like, all right, I guess I have to root for you, because I'm not going to root for those assholes. There are some stupid decisions in this movie. Like, she gets this guy, she breaks her flashlight, and the glass on the flashlight's probably, like, you know, one inch in di diameter. She's like, just that much glass lands on the ground. He's chasing her. And he has one boot on and one missing. So, but the one foot that's barefoot hits the glass. Convenient. And while he's agonizing in pain for like three minutes straight, she had all the time in the world to turn around and go blow his head off. But she doesn't. This movie has a dream sequence in it. She has three or four dream sequences in a row just to give us some more gore for the sake of it. Just like, all right, we need more gore in this movie. So let's have her get her head shot off two or three times just to see what it would look like if it really did happen. You don't need that. It's just stupid. I understood she took a drug. She takes this drug that makes it to where she doesn't feel pain for a while so she can, like, tend to her wounds. And it's just, like, bullshit. The fact that she didn't bleed out by that point in the movie is bullshit, too, because she leaves this blood trail from, like, just, like, a mile long. She's just bleeding constantly, and she doesn't tend to those wounds for, like, 12 hours, and then she tends to them, heals it, but she didn't bleed out by then. I mean, that's just unrealistic. What's even more unrealistic is the fact that that bitch is even alive. She felt she got pushed off a cliff and she fell 50 to 70, maybe 100 feet. Just fell all the way down and she landed on a tree that didn't have like, it just had branches, sharp branches sticking out. It's just like a tree in the desert. You know, maybe about six feet tall of a tree. Not that tall, very skinny, just branches and one just stabs right through her stomach and it prevents her from falling all the way to the ground. So it just breaks her fall and breaks through her literally. And then she wakes up like a few minutes later, she's got fire ants or like some ants just crawling on her stomach wound. And she walks around all day with this wound bleeding all over the place. She should have bled out. She should have died from that fall, period. We got conveniences in this movie like when a guy can easily kill this protagonist but chooses not to. He just went, he's drowning her. He has no reason to keep talking to her, but he just keeps lifting her back out of the water to tell her more shit. You know, like, ah, drowning her. And then he's like, you know, you thought you got me. No, I'm smarter. And he just keeps pulling her out of the water to tell her more stupid shit to brag about how he's got her. He's got the upper hand. And then that gives her time to get his knife and stab him in both eyes. It's convenient for her. And it makes no sense. All he had to do was just drown her, or better yet, just fucking shoot her. He knocked her out. Come on. I think the most ridiculous part part of this movie where it just totally like ruins everything before, where I was like, you know, everything was okay, and then all of a sudden we get to this third act where they're just running in circles for five minutes straight, like fucking children who just don't have any logic at that point at all. I guess they're hus they're so hysterical at that moment, or just exhausted that they're not thinking straight. But they run in circles. I shit you not. This one circle in the house that makes no sense because it's such small hallways. What purpose do they serve for this house? Why would you need that circle? There's nothing in that circle. No extra rooms. Why is it there? But they're running in circles chasing each other over and over and over again at least three dozen times before finally one of them slips and falls on the blood gushing from this guy who should be dead too. He should be so weak from blood loss he should be on the ground just dead. Like gallons of blood were missing from this guy at that point. And the fact that he had the strength to just lift her, and again, convenient, 
just hold up against the wall and give her a speech before he kills her to give her time to fight back again. It's like, quit with the speech giving and just fucking kill her. I'm so sick of conveniences like that in movies where they just gotta give you that last speech that's, you know, to say, haha, you thought you had me, but you don't. Just to give him enough time to fuck you in your ass. Fuck this guy in his ass. Seriously. I, that would have been a great ending. If she just took the barrel of that gun, shoved it in his ass, and then blew it out of his fucking mouth. Just shot his anus out through his mouth. Because that guy is literally an asshole. I hate him. We had to look at his ass for so long in this movie. That's another negative. Penis in this movie. You see male penis in this movie and ass for so long it's not even necessary. But yeah, just stupid conveniences like that to help her out. Them bullshitting around. And then she takes like a this beer can and then she like gets it real hot and she uses it to like heal her stomach wound and it burns the image of the beer can on her stomach like a tattoo would that really happen I i'm gonna call bullshit because it's not like it's one of those you know irons that you use like you know brand cows or something it was just a regular beer can it's not like the image was sticking out of the beer can some like a tattoo thing that you put on you like the baby tattoos you put water on it it wasn't like that it was just an actual beer can it would be like if she took a coca-cola can and did the same thing it would say coca-cola on her stomach afterwards would that really happen now i have to look it up this movie it's just it's like it's good at some moments and it's just like terrible i mean the third act of this movie almost just ruins the whole movie for me but i still had some fun in the first two acts it's okay of a movie so therefore i'll say when it comes to revenge this might be a movie if you're into this kind of stuff, revenge, rape movies, then you can go get this at Redbox. And those are my thoughts on revenge. Did you see this movie in 2017? I think it went straight to DVD. I'm not even sure if it was at the theaters. If it was, let me know. But what are your thoughts on this movie? If you enjoyed this video at all, you can hit this like button over here to support it. And if you want to be a subscriber, you can do so by clicking on my cartoon face in five seconds to see more. And until next time, I'll see you soon.